Hey, how's it going? So I'm still testing stuff out with videos, trying different things, seeing what people like, what people don't like. And one of the things I want to do with this video is have it kind of just be more of like a talking video rather than showing different distributions and desktop environments. I'd rather go over certain terms, definitions, that kind of stuff. That way you can give context and a better understanding so that you're able to choose a distro that works for you rather than just taking a recommendation that I might say. Everybody always recommends the same kinds of distros. Oh, try out Mint. Try out Arch, try out <laughs> install Gentoo, you know, um, as a beginner, don't install Gentoo, please. But yeah, this is going to be more of like a talking kind of video, more so than the other videos that I've done. What I will give you all is uh, more meme out, more full screen meme out while I go over this stuff. Enjoy. For anybody looking to move to Linux, I'm sure you've asked yourself the question, what distro should I pick? This video is not going to tell you what distro to pick. This video is not going to go over all the different distros that are out there. There's just far too many. But what I am going to go over are certain key concepts that will hopefully help you decide what is the right distro for you. On the surface, there's a lot of distros that cater to certain use cases or needs more than others, right? So for example, Linux Linux Mint is geared towards beginners. How is it geared towards beginners? For damn near everything in the system, there's a graphical user interface. So it makes things a lot easier for a new user because a new user trying to do things with a terminal is not going to know what the hell to do. It's a blank screen with a cursor that's blinking at them and they don't know what the commands are. They don't know how to fiddle with a terminal because there's nothing to fiddle with. You have to research, you have to look up stuff. I get it, that's intimidating. Over time, with a little bit of use here and there, it's not so bad. It, it can be intimidating. Now, if everything had a graphical user interface, it would be a lot easier to just mess around and try and figure things out because everything is there. You just click on it, see what it does and go from there. I want to go over key concepts because as you're going over and checking out all of these distros, you're going to notice a bunch of different things. You're going to notice some of the distros might have different forks, right? In other words, branches, they, they branch off, they do different things. For example, Mint is based off of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is based off of Debian. So these are like different forks, so to speak. But there's even more to it than that. There's some branches or some forks that are considered stable, and there's others that are considered bleeding edge, and then there's others that are considered immutable. What the hell does all of this shit mean? So for example, stable focuses on that stability. Now, that the pro for a stable release is that it's stable. The con is that the update cycle is a lot slower and it's a lot slower so that it can guarantee stability, which means that certain packages are going to be older. And if you have brand new hardware, then chances are that operating system might not recognize it. So then what the hell's bleeding edge? A bleeding edge distro or a rolling release distro I think is what they're referred to as. Rolling release distros are always trying to be as up to date as possible. Newer hardware tends to be recognized with rolling releases over more stable releases sometimes. This is not like a 100% all the time, but you know, usually. So for example, a stable release is gonna be considered much more stable than a rolling release. Does that mean the rolling release is always gonna crash and always gonna have bugs and stuff like that? No, not really. It's just compared to the stable release, yes, it may have updates that may break certain things because not everything updates all exactly at the same time. And remember, Linux, it's a modular system made from a lot of different programs. So if one thing updates but something else does, it might not recognize it, it might break something, or it might even break your system. And then there's immutable distros. So immutable systems by default, the system is read only. Now, if you give yourself access to the system, then you may be able to make changes, but the moment that you update your system, any changes you made are gonna get reverted because it's going to essentially install the updated system all as like one piece. This also means that that system, the immutable system is gonna rely more on flat packs. Flat packs are kind of system agnostic because it's like, the Flatpak program runs a container, so it comes with everything it needs, all the dependencies and all that kind of stuff, it already comes packaged with all of that. So for example, SteamOS. SteamOS is an immutable system. As long as you don't really need access to the system, it, it just kind of works. And if you want to download programs, you just download a flat pack and it just works. But you're reliant on flat packs now. The pro to them, like I said, it's kind of like a container or a sandbox program. Because 
it sandbox. You need a program that interacts with other parts of the system or other programs. The flat pack might cause issues. Pros for stable releases. It's stable. Slower update cycle. Cons. Doesn't really have the most up-to-date packages, which you might not see as a con. All of this is, is dependent on your use case. So you may not necessarily see the slower update cycles as a con. If the packages that you use, if it's an older package, but it works just fine, then, then you don't have an issue with it. That's great. If you're running on older hardware, that's also great. It doesn't really matter then. But it does become a con if you have, like for example, a 5000 series NVIDIA GPU or a 9000 series AMD GPU or, or something, you know? Now, rolling releases. The pros for rolling releases, it will always download the latest packages. Now, the con to that is that sometimes certain packages will break either other packages or your system. That's a little bit of a con. I don't want to scare anybody from a rolling release distribution just because it's considered less stable than a stable distribution. A rolling release distribution is still going to be infinitely more stable than a Windows install. My PC, I've never had my PC crash since I moved to Linux. Pros for a rolling release, if you have the newest hardware out there, chances are that rolling release is going to recognize it. Now for an immutable system, the pros to an immutable system is that the system itself is contained and it's almost like it kind of treats the system as one big piece as opposed to a bunch of modular pieces. The system itself is read-only. Now the pros of that is the fact that it is a much more secure system. The core system is read-only, which means that you and other programs cannot gain access to it. Now the con to that is the fact that that system is read-only. So if you have to make any kind of changes, right? So for example, on the Steam Deck, the Steam OS, it's an Arch distribution, but it's an immutable system. So in other words, you don't have write access to the core system for Steam OS by default. Now you can give yourself access to it and you can make changes, but then those changes are gonna get reverted on every update. I don't know whether you wanna call this a pro or a con, but you are reliant on flat packs. The pro of a flat pack is that they're agnostic to the system. So regardless of whether you have Ubuntu, Mint, Debian, Arch, whatever, flat packs will still run because they're, they're self-contained. It's like a little container that has the program and all the things that the programs need, and it's just already bundled into it. That means it's gonna be a little bit larger than a standard package that you install from the package manager. It will usually work no problem. Now the problem arises when that program has to interact with either another program or with your system or something like that, because again, it is like in a little container independent of the rest of your system. It's like in a little sandbox. So it might not necessarily work if the program requires to interact with other programs or with your system. For example, something like a VPN or maybe OBS might be kind of finicky. Those are the different types of distros. And we're talking about like just the system itself. Only you can really determine or decide which one of those systems you're gonna need. For example, a stable release is probably a good start for a beginner. All three of them, a beginner can still jump on all three. So for example, Apache OS is supposed to be considered kind of like a just works distro. Now, is it as beginner friendly as Mint? I'm not sure. I can't personally speak on, on Catchy, but I'm, I keep seeing more and more and more of it. And it's an Arch-based distribution that's supposed to be pretty user-friendly and geared towards performance. So a lot of people like using it to play video games and stuff. All right, so those are the three different types of systems. I know this, is, this video is a little rambly, but the main thing you probably want to do when choosing a distro is choosing it more based off the desktop environment, because that is what you are going to be interacting with day in and day out if you use any of these distributions as a daily driver. The desktop environment is a combination of a bunch of programs and packages that serves as your interaction with the system. So for example, there's KDE, there's Gnome, there's Cinnamon, which is mainly with Mint, but I think there are other distributions that do incorporate Cinnamon. There's XFCE, there's Budgie. So there's a lot of different desktop environments out there. Honestly, it all just depends on what you like the look of but even then that's customizable depending on the desktop environment so for example KDE Plasma is my favorite desktop environment because it can be as simple or as customizable as you want it to be by default KDE Plasma kind of gives a very Windows like feel where it has a bar all the way in the bottom and you can do there's so many options you can move the panel to the top you can move it to the side you can do a bunch of different stuff you can 
change it completely. If you want to make it look more Windows like, you can do that. If you want to make it look more Mac OS like, you could do that. There's just a lot of different things that you could do with KDE. KDE's, in my opinion, is probably one of the best desktop environments for a beginner to start off with. It can be a little overwhelming once you start to customize it because, like I said, there's a lot of different options. If you don't want to do that, then it kind of gets out of your way as well. It doesn't really doesn't really interrupt you much in terms of usability. Gnome, I'll be frank, I kind of don't like it. I don't like Gnome. I know there's some weird interactions with Gnome in certain applications as well. I haven't had that issue with KDE personally, but I know when I did have Gnome, I did have weird kind of like interactions with some some programs, and I, I don't know. I'm just not I'm not a big fan of it. Then there's XFCE. XFCE is kind of like a very old looking desktop environment. When you think of like a really old PC, like old school Windows, like 98 or whatever, like it kind of has that feel to it. I mean, if you like that aesthetic, awesome. If you prefer a more modern looking system, then you might not like it. But the main thing for XFCE is that it's really lightweight. I mean, as it is, Linux is way more lightweight than Windows. But if you got something really old, like I have like a ThinkPad, like X61 or X60, I forget, with a Core 2 Duo CPU. Despite being such an old laptop, Arctic's with XFCE runs no problem. Now, am I going to be doing any kind of games or anything like that on there? No, not at all. But, you know, for some basic stuff, it, it works. It does the job. So as a beginner moving over to Linux, I would recommend either Cinnamon or KDE because both of them have a very familiar Windows-esque kind of feel to it. So for a beginner, I would recommend a distribution with either Cinnamon or KDE. I hope I was able to kind of explain some of this stuff. My recommendation, just download the ISO, put it on a USB drive, boot it up, run it in a live environment on your PC and mess around with it that way. See if you like the feel of it. All right. If you don't, guess what? Distro hop to the next one. All right. Distro hopping is a thing. It's normal. Don't worry about it. All right. It's not a bad thing. But what I hope was I was able to at least kind of explain what some of the different things are when you are looking at different distros. Hopefully with that information and your use case for your system, you'll be able to make an informed decision as to what distro would be right for you. Aside from that, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you want me to check out a specific distro? Let me know. If you want me to go over something in particular, by all means, let me know in the comments. Aside from that, have a good one.